Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to embed 3D brain regions in PowerPoint. As shown here, when you embed the 3D models, you can visually inspect it, rotate it in PowerPoint slide, including the functional MR results or MRI regions or stratigraphy. So let's look at what the data we needed to make this possible. For fMRI results, I have three files here, um, including the structural image, the raw fMRI data, and the results. So to take a quick look of those data to make sure what we have here, first of all, for the fMRI data, if you drag it into DSS Studio, you will see there's some information about it. Here is a time series and also the voxel size which is much smaller and at the, in a different space of the structural image. So we look at the structural image. You, usually this one is having a much higher resolution and this uh, space difference will be important when we create those 3D models. And also we need to make sure that the results, um, the space, you see, it could be either in the native space, it's the same of the function MRI or either in the MRI space. Here you need to make sure that which space is going to for the first uh, pre part of the function of my results. Here we have the results in the native space as you can see here, the dimension and resolution is the same of the um, original function of my data. To, so to confirm those results and then let's open the data first. Now we start DSS Studio. Um, go to click on the step T3 fiber tracking visualization. Make sure the action here is open a local fit file. Click on it. And then here you may not see any fit file showing up because the default file format is a fit file used by DWI. And here just switch it to Unity file. And to open which one here we would set that structural image to um, create an image space for us. Click open. Now only it would pop out another interface showing the, the 3D slice of the T1 we just opened here. And now the first step is we would like to create a brain surface to allow us to look at the structure of the brain. To create a brain surface, go to slices menu, add ISO surface and click the entire brain here. It will take a while, um, this is still wrong nonlinear registration, try to get a contour of the surface and then present it here. At the same time, you also generate some other files in the same folder. They will make um, this surface creating much faster. So click OK, uh, okay and then you, if you turn off the slides, you can see the ISO surface created in. So now it's uh, based on this uh, T1 image to create a size here. Now we would like to get the regions in. Um, go to the slide uh, regions menu and open region. But here, because the results is in the native space, it's kind of different from the T1 space. So when you open it, DSS Studio will say it's, it's not able to get it loaded because they it doesn't have the registration available. So to work this out, First, you will need to load the raw function MI data as a reference so that this is to register it. To do so, go to the slice menu first, click insert other images, and here open the function MI data. So once you open it, DSS Studio would register this with the T1. So we see it's a quickly get to the result. And by looking at the brain ISO surface, and you can see the alignment is good with the uh, functional data. If the alignment is not good, you can manually adjust it using the adjust registration function here. So once this raw function my data is loaded, then DSS Studio has the reference between the T1 and the functional my space. And therefore, right now we could open the region of the uh, cluster here. Previously, it's not able to do so because there is no link between the 
native functional space and the native T1 space. So right now everything's loaded. You will see the ISO surface and the regions coming up. And one thing before we export the 3D model to the PowerPoint is here the region is a little bit transparent. This may not look good when um, inserted into PowerPoint slides. So one thing I always did here is um, increase the opacity of the region rendering uh, to one so it make it totally opaque and it's not transparent. And of course you would prefer different setting. You can change your rendering setting here. So region rendering controls how those regions render in 3D and the ISO surface can also be um, modified here. For example, the opacity, you can reduce it or increase it or change the color. So once you get a perfect uh, view you would like to have and all the things ready, you can go to the view menu and click save 3D model. And right now you, it's going to save a .obj file which you call the 3D setting. Just click save once you determine the file name. Now it's saving the 3D model as you can see in the same folder. There are several new files created. Uh, the one is the .map.gz. This one is a registration for the T1 which allows DSS Studio to create ISO surface. And the 3D model includes on uh, these two files, the OPJ file and the material file. And to load it in PowerPoint, what you could do simply is just drag the OPJ file in. So we just drag this OPJ file in. And then it will take a while for the PowerPoint to load down. So you can see that it's, it's inserted here as a new object. And here you could rotate it and inspect it. So what if the results in, is in the MNI region? Sometimes we may have functional my results or any region we would like to visualize here, but we don't have the native space like T1. So one way to do it is in DSS Studio, there's a built-in template space, the MNI space. So for the human, you will need to select the ICBM 152 adult. Uh, of course, you are doing animal study or other species study, you have other templates here. So here, select to the dot template, this will open the ICBN 152 MNI as a space. Once you click it, it will get you to the space here, uh, or the MNI space. And in other tutorial, you may learn how to run fiber tracking, for example, how to get an ideal fiber track you would like to see. Um, you, if you're interested, you could look at other videos. And now here is in my space, we can just go ahead and then click uh, the region we would like to open. So there's an MNI region file. Um, we can just go ahead and then open it up. And you should see how it nicely looking here. At the same time, we can also add ISO surface. Um, for example, it's like the entire surface all loaded in. And to edit in PowerPoint, Similarly, you go to the view menu, click save 3D model. Then right now we could save another OPJ file to be able to insert it in the PowerPoint. And the last example will be the chartography and also let's ins insert it with the chrono slides here and using an animal study as an example, it's showing the different tracks here. So in this example, I will use the mouse template. Switch it to the mouse template, click the T3 fiber tracking. This opened up um, um, mouse template space. And here I would also like to create ISO surface. In different template, sometimes you may need to select the, the, the ISO. This one is modeling the isotropic diffusion. And once you select the different slides, you can create ISO surface in a similar way. Click OK. Now you can see the ISO surface loading up. And now to insert it, this the histology slide, the file I have in here is downloaded from the Adam Brand Atlas. Um, in Adam Brand website allow you to download uh, any section of the slides including histology and the atlas. And we could also visualize this with DSS Studio's 3D fiber tracks. To do so, of course, we, we need to get the, this 
slice in the JPG file format. Usually it's not too big, um, but also not too small. In, usually in the decent resolution would be good enough. And now here to insert it in this space, the first step it need to do is go to the chrono section. Make sure that you have a similar section of what we have here. It doesn't need to be very precise. Um, the purpose here is just to create like an initial registration location. Um, once you have this similar sections ready, go to the slices, insert picture here, select the insert chrono picture. And we can select the Adam brand, histology and atlas in. And this is a problem whether we do work out the registration, you just click yes. And this is still we'll use this initial location and to work out the registration. You can see here is slightly it's just the location. Um, we can check whether the registration is good. Usually a good tip would be make a slice a little bit transparent so we could nicely see the contours matching the surface and see if that is good. Also another tip here is that we can create an ISO surface just posterior to this slice. The way to work this out is switching back to the ISO, which allows us to create ISO surface. Um, and then go to the sizes menu, add ISO surface to the posterior, click the threshold, okay. And then you can see it's like only adding on the posterior part and we can switch back to the histology slice enable slice rendering. And now to visualize all this together with stratigraphy, there are several ways to generate tracks. And to make this simple, we could just open the existing track I have. Load it here, check all of them. So before we export this into a 3D model, there are several things you need to pay attention to. One is usually the, those tracks are having a lot of streamline. Um, for thousand, more than 10,000 of streamline, um, this would be too heavy for the 3D model. So the first step you need to do when you visualize this 3D model of the tractography is to reduce the streamline count. Um, the function we need here is go to the track miscellaneous menu. There's a function called delete repeated tracks. Click on it and you can set that the distance threshold higher value will, will get a more more um, course of the track presentation. That means we did more tracks. You can try either two or three. So here we could try two. And this as you will remove some of the repeated track. You will see the over 50 presentation doesn't really uh, change much, but you can see a lot of track being deleted to make the model smaller. There are still some that's pretty, pretty large, like the anchor anterior coming show. So what we could do is I can just uncheck those, the being smaller enough and keep those that still having a lot of string line counts. Um, and repeat doing this. So here, instead of two, I can increase this to uh, three. And you see that it's further delete some of them. So once everything's good, you can visualize all the track. Another thing to pay attention to is this 3D model to be imported in PowerPoint cannot visualize the RGB color we see here. So what the things that we're going to do is change this to assign color. So I, the, the step I'm going to do is assign a different color to each of the tracks. There is a function under the, uh, the track miscellaneous. Um, no, it's under the track cluster. There's a function called assign colors to all clusters. Once you click on it, you will see the track rendering switch to assign color and each of them has a different assign color. And you can switch this back under the track rendering menu, switch it to directional color, no assign color. And for the 3D model to, to, to be supported in PowerPoint, you can only use the assign color. So once everything this is done, we can just save the model and I'll put it to a folder. And once this is ready, we'll see is output a lot of 
files, 3D files here, including the OBJ file, material file. The slides will also output it as a JPG. And here you could, you could just drag the OBJ file into PowerPoint um, to visualize it here. You'll get a similar result with what we did. So this will be the way to present the tractography. And another limitation of this uh, PowerPoint 3D model is it can only be rotated during uh, the editing mode. So here in this editing mode, I can rotate this to any location I would like to look at. However, this will not be, this rotation is not doable when you turn on the slideshow. And a, a way to work around is before you work out this uh, slideshow, you can determine different view. But first of all, I can copy these slides into multiple different other slides. And the second slide, I can slightly modify a little bit to look at the, the view I would like to present. For example, I can I would like to look at certain structure to make it bigger. And then I can use the transition function on the top. There's a function called morph. Um, now this this uh, function works out in a way that you will try to move from a previous slide to another. So in this way, I can um, present a different view in multiple different slides and use the move function to allow us to get a continuous 3D presentation as shown here. So, so once you have this different view, when you turn on the slideshow and then click on any keyboard button, you will see how it nicely transition from one view tenant to another. Um, this mode function will enable you to look at different orientation of the 3D model in the, the slideshow mode. And thank you for watching this. Uh, if you have a question, feel free to email me.